thank you, Jill, for allowing us into your home and for telling us a little bit about you. Um, through the conversations that you had with Deborah, uh, Deborah's spent the week making a little show specifically and specially for you. So I'm just going to check if Deborah's ready and then we'll get on with this. Okay, lovely. Hey. Contract money goes on tea business. Oh, I'm here to do the snagging. We're, we're reopening later, in about half an hour actually, and I'm here to do the last little checks. Oh, I haven't got all day and I can't wait for them. Right, I'm just going to start now. Okay, so, yep, yeah, paintwork's well, looking good. Oh, let me look some, it's still a bit damp there. Okay, that's fine. Yep, yeah, covered. That one's fixed now. Good. Right, what else was there? Oh yes, the skirtings. Yep, they've been cleaned down. Very good, lovely. Windows. Oh, they need a bit of a clean, I think. Yep, windows. Garden. Oh my god, there's that squirrel again. Don't believe it. Oh no. Do you know what? I told those builders not to put biscuits out for them. The last resident that was here, she was obsessed, always putting food out for them. Honestly, we were overrun with the things. Rodents, go up! I've got to get into this, sorry. Excuse me. Shoo! Come on, shoo! Yes! Get off! <laughs> oh my god. That woman is nuts. Every time she's here, she tries to shoot me off. Oh, she ain't moving in here. And who does she think she is? Calling me a rodent. A uh, rodent. <laughs> just in case of intruders, you know, of habits. <laughs> so, how lovely to see you. Oh, I'm making biscuits, I hope you don't mind. I am uh, very excited, actually. I have job interview tomorrow. <laughs> I'm so excited, it's unbelievable. It's my first job interview since coming to this country. It is in cafe up in Camden Road, you might know it. So, I think, well, maybe if I make some biscuits, you know, I might impress the manager and then I might get the job. I will really need the job as well. Um, I've been here six months now, you see, so it is time to move on. And uh, they're refurbishing the place. Apparently they have new residents coming in soon. So I'm getting a new flat all for myself. I cannot believe it. So things are working up. New flat, possibly a new job. I love it, can't wait. So yes, I'm making the biscuits for my interview. These are very special biscuits. They always make me happy. It is a recipe that my old grandma Olga teaches me. And what I do whenever I go somewhere new, I love to make these biscuits. When I first come to this country, to this hostel, I know no one, I have no one, it's just me. So I make grandma's raisin heart biscuits, they make me happy. Yes, she always used to bake for us when we were children. And she made me learn the recipe by heart. She said, if something on a piece of paper can be lost. But if something is inside you, in your heart, it can never be lost. And it goes with you wherever you go in the world. How bright she was. So anyway, I'll tell you a recipe, not a secret recipe. So we have butter, like my grandpa. So cold and hard, but sometimes warm and soft, especially when he's in my hands. <laughs> Sugar, like my grandma, sweet and refined. Egg yolk, like my mother, bright as the summer sunshine. Lemon, 
women like my father. Mm. Bitter and sharp of tongue. <laughs> Water to represent the lake where we live. Flower like the snow on the mountain top by the lake. And of course, raisins like my brothers and sisters. Lots of them all look the same. <laughs> so, this is grandma's recipe that she teach me. And the most important part is, you must make hot chilled biscuits, so you know you are loved. So, here we are, grandma's hot chilled biscuits. So, I hope you're going to try them later. I put them in the oven. Very good. Now, when grandma used to make the biscuits, while we were waiting for them to be cooked, she would tell us stories. We loved her stories. And they were always fairy stories. But now when I think back, I think that maybe they weren't really fairy stories. They were stories about her and her life that she didn't really want to tell us. So, this is my favorite. I tell you now. So, once upon a time, there was a little girl named Grace. She lived with her grandma. And all of her brothers and sisters, they lived in a little cottage by a lake next to the mountain. <laughs> the mountain was so tall it was covered in snow. <laughs> and legend said it was ruled by the Winter King. They had a very happy childhood. They had been sent there by their parents away from the city to keep them from danger. And they were kept from danger. It was very safe. They played in the fields, they fished, they swam in the lake. It was a wonderful life, as good as it gets. Like everything in life, Time moves, people move, and the children grew up. And one by one, they went on their way. One went back to the city. One went off to university. Another one traveling. And one here, and one there, and so on, and so on. Until all that was left was Grandma and Grace, who was now a beautiful young woman. They liked living together, enjoyed each other's company. And Grace loved it because she didn't like to venture. She was a quiet girl, just liked being at home. And all was happy. Until one day, a moment started. The vibration softened at first and slow. And they were scared and they hid under the table. And it got darker and darker and darker. And the sky went from grey to black. And they couldn't see. And it got colder and colder. And they were so scared. And they looked out of the window and up at the mountain. And there on the top of the mountain, huge eruptions of snow and darkness all over the land. Oh, they were both terrified. Oh, and they hid under the table. And then, silence. Nothing outside except for gentle snowfall and darkness. Grace crept out from under the table. She asked Grandma, what shall we do, Grandma? Grandma said, Oh, Grace, it is the Winter King. He must be upset about something. You have to go up top of mountain and find out what he wants. Grace could not believe this. It was a legend. It was not true. And she told Grandma so. <laughs> said Grandma, right. Oh, he's not true. I know he true. I see him when I little girl. I know he'll live out there. Don't worry yourself. I go, I go. Don't worry about my bed. Oh, and my, oh, leg. Oh, and my bed, I say, I go up the mountain myself. I think the 
grandma was a bit of a drama queen, no? So, of course, Grace said she would go, which made grandma very happy. And grandma gave her two raisin biscuits to take with her. Grace put her coat on, put the biscuits in the pocket, pulled on her boots. She was ready to go. Grandma said, don't forget your raisin biscuits. If you need them for energy, or if you've been hungry, or if you need to think of me. And so, Grace decided to go out into the snow. The gentle snow covered the land, and Grace started to trudge through the snow to the top of the mountain. It was very hard work, and it took a very long time, and gradually, she got further and further and further away from the cottage until she was at the bottom of the mountain. But no. Where was the footpath? How is she supposed to get up to the top of the mountain? Everything is covered in snow. There is nowhere to find out. She didn't know what to do. Oh no, Grandma, how am I going to get up? But she couldn't feel bad. She had promised Grandma she would find him to kill. There was nothing for it but to climb. Oh dear. So in the dark, she started to climb up the mountain. It was so arduous. She wasn't used to doing any kind of exercise. She just liked living at home. The muscles in her arms burnt and her legs and she couldn't see where she was going and she scratched her arms on trees and branches. Her poor little face was frozen and she had been climbing for hours and hours and she started weeping. She was so tired. And she sat down in the snow and wept like a baby. Oh, I can't go on. And then she reached into her pocket for her handkerchief. She found one of the raisin biscuits the hard biscuits that Grandma had given her. Oh, it cheered her up and made her happy, and she quickly ate it. Then a noise from behind, a noise getting louder and nearer, deafening, coming down the mountain towards her. <gasps> An avalanche, she thought. But before she could even open her mouth to scream, suddenly, from nowhere, a beautiful white horse He was magical, shimmering white like the snow, with a mane on tail of gold. She was so surprised to see such a creature. And she looked at him. I can't believe it. Where did you come from? Do not be afraid, said the horse. I am here to help you. A talking horse? She must be going crazy. He said, I have been created by the Winter King by default. Whenever something bad is made, there is always good. And wherever there is good, there is always bad. It's going well. I will take you to the Winter King. Jump on my back. And with that, Grace jumped on the horse's back. And with one huge gallop, he flew up into the sky. Up, 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 up to the top of the mountain. And he gently put her down. She could not believe it. But thank you, kind host. Please, please, have my other biscuits as a token of my gratitude. My grandma made them. They are the loveliest biscuits in the world. And she gave the horse the biscuit, which he took graciously. And then he pointed her towards a huge snow palace. You must go in alone. Cannot come with you. So Grace looked at the huge palace and she felt so small on this massive mountain, just a small woman. What could she do? This was too crazy. Flying, talking, horses, small palaces. She was just nobody. But she decided to go on. She walked towards the snow palace and as she got there, the doors opened in front of her. She peered in. It was dark, even darker than outside, pitch black. But she knew she must go. She 
speech forward carefully, full of fear and trepidation. And then boomed a voice. What are you doing in my palace? She did not know where that voice was coming from. Oh, Winter King, it is I, Grace. I, I, I live at the bottom of the mountain with my grandma. She sent me here. Please, everyone is, is, is frightened and scared and lost and we all just wanted to go back to how it was before. Please, please, what can I do to give you? Please make it better for us. Out of the shadows, we strode a huge and terrifying creature. I know who you are, he said. I want you and everyone in this land. You think I don't know? Yet none of you give me recognition or respect. None of you care for me. No, it's not true, said Grace. We do care for you. We do. We care for you as my grandma cares for us. Please, what can we give you? What does your grandmother give you to show she cares for you? She makes us biscuits, said Grace. Then bring me the biscuits, said the Winter King. <gasps> Grace backed out of the palace and she rushed back out into the snow. She was excited because she knew she could do something about this terrible curse. And she started running down the hill, running down the mountain, but it was slippery and dark and there were obstacles and she had fallen out of things and it was awful and it was hard work and she thought, oh my goodness, where is the horse when you need him? And suddenly, out of nowhere, there he was, next to her, riding alongside, quick jump on my back, he said, and we will go to Grandma. So Grace jumped on and they galloped down the mountain. Why don't you fly down the mountain, said Grace. I can only fly up the mountain. <laughs> so you know nothing about physics. So they flew down the mountain. And Grace excitedly told him about her plan to make biscuits for the Winter King. Grandma's raisin hot biscuits. But the horse did not think it was a good idea. No. You must not give him Grandma's biscuits. I have tasted them. They are full of love. He does not understand love. It will have no effect on him. You must find something to defeat him. Think what you can put in biscuits. He has to have biscuits. I guess we'll think of some different ingredients. So she hurriedly went in and said, Grandma, we have to make biscuits. Oh, Grandma was over just, okay, I get everything out, I get my raisins. And Grandma started getting all of the ingredients out. Grace told her, no, Grandma. We cannot have hot raisin biscuits. We have to make something else. But Grandma did not know how to make anything else. It was all up to Grace to find something. Oh no, said Grace. Think, Grace, think. What are you going to make? Right, he is a winter king. He likes dark and he likes uh, cold. So how will you defeat him? So dark and cold. So, so maybe you need something warm. Yes, something warm to get rid of cold. And, and something light, bright, to get rid of dark. Yes, yes. So she frantically started looking for the cup for ingredients. Oh, oh, chili, chili, that is what I put that in biscuits. No, that's not what I put, I don't put chili in biscuits. So she carried on looking through the cupboards until she found a pot of ginger. Oh, ginger. Oh, yes, this will work. Oh, this will make it nice and warm. Oh, yes. She was very happy. She kept the ginger. Now, what about bright? Um, um, she looked in the drawers, light bulbs, not at all work, can't put them in biscuits. Oh, what am I going to? Wow. And her hand found a star shaped cup. Oh, stars. They are bright, they are light. Yes, ginger star biscuit, it will work. She and Grandma quickly made a batch of biscuits, bundled them up, still warm, and Grace rushed outside to horse. They flew up to the top of the mountain in a flash. And Grace looked at the palace once more. This time she was not so afraid. She had done what he asked. She only prayed that it would work. Please, please, please let it work. Please, please, please let it work. As she kneeled, the door was opened. Who dares enter my palace? Came the voice. It is I, Winter King. It is Grace. I bring biscuits for you. 
she left them on the floor for him. Did your grandmother make those biscuits? Yes, said Grace. Being truthful, technically. And with that, she backed out of the door and fled onto the horse and they flew down the mountain. In the meantime, the Winter King crept out from his shadows. He spied the biscuits. He smelled the delicious ginger. And with one swoop, he scooped them and gobbled them up, laughing at how stupid the woman was and how he had tricked her. <laughs> but he was the one who had been tricked. As Grace and the horse flew down the mountain, a point of light. Another point of light, another point of light. Stars. The sky started lightening. And as they galloped down the hill, oh, it started getting slippy and slushy. The snow was melting. Eventually, a whole river cascading down the mountain, taking great and a horse with it. At the bottom, splash. And the horse dissolved back into the water droplets he was made from. Grace started swimming back to Grandma's house. But as she did so, the sky got lighter. And the river and water receded until, by the time she got home, everything was back to how it had been before. We did it, Grandma! We did it! She cried, rushing into the house. They hugged and celebrated like never before. But things don't always go back to how they were before. Some things always change. And Grandma knew it was time for change. They decided to move to the city. But before they moved, Grandma made a batch of hot raisin biscuits to take with them on the journey. <laughs> so, I think our biscuits must be ready by now. Oh, they are. Excuse me while I turn the oven off. So, Oh, I hope, I hope these are nice. I really do hope that he likes them. <laughs> so, here you are. You think they look nice? Ooh. Oh, hello, squirrel. Hello, hold on, hold on. I have squirrel friends who lives in garden, and when I make biscuits, I always give them one. Would you excuse me while I just take one out? Maybe a little bit hot for them. Excuse me. from County Council to say that Grace House is now officially open. Thank you all for coming. We really do hope that all the new residents really enjoy their stay here. To Grace House! 